The season finale of Outlander airs this Sunday. The popular Stars series, based on Diana Gabaldon's best-selling novels of the same name, racks up about 1.5 million viewers each week for its enviable blend of historical fiction and romance, fantasy and sci-fi. Think of it like a mishmash of Downton Abbey, Braveheart, and The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, but with a strong feminist undercurrent. Unsurprisingly, women make up a huge portion of the fan base. If you're unfamiliar with the series, the show stars Katrina Balfe as British combat nurse Claire Randall, a role that recently garnered her a fourth Golden Globe nomination, and the story begins with her visiting Inverness, Scotland, with her husband, just after the end of World War II. The pair are attempting to rekindle after their wartime separation and end up witnessing a traditional druid dance at an ancient mystical site. Claire later returns alone and is somehow transported back to the Highlands in 1743, where she meets James Jamie Fraser, played by Sam Hewen. While Hewen may, at face value, look like mere man candy in a kilt, once you become fully immersed in the show, and you will, you realize he's so much more. So much so that he's inspired a legion of fans to dub themselves the Huglions. Once transported, Claire becomes caught up in the Jacobite Risings, the attempt by the Catholic Charles Edward Stuart, a.k.a. Bonnie Prince Charlie, to regain the British throne for the House of Stuart, and ultimately, worlds in that least one metaphysical plane away from her husband, she falls madly, deeply, and passionately in love with Jamie. Several seasons in, Claire and Jamie, a.k.a. the hottest couple on TV, have been through the ringer. There was the culture shock that one would suspect goes along with time travel, and then lots of flogging, war, prison time, sexual assault, rape, the loss of a child, separation, pirates, smugglers, and smallpox, among their many other trials. At the end of season 3, Claire and Jamie arrive, via shipwreck, no less, on the coast of Georgia in 1767. Season 4 picks up in the Carolinas. Right off the bat, there are things not to like, Jamie's bangs for one, a couple of pivotal miscastings for another, a plantation set, which, FYI, was actually shot in Scotland, that feels a little too Disney-esque, and yes, the fact that at times it can all skew very days of our lives, but the subject matter is still shockingly resonant. In one early scene, Claire and Jamie stare out at an expansive view of the Appalachians, and she speaks about the American dream. She tells him about how the United States will take shape and the immigrants who will inhabit it. She addresses the injustices and barbarianism of slavery and explains how Native Americans, much like Highlanders, will have their lands taken from them and their traditions misappropriated. On the heels of an MLK weekend dominated with headlines about teens wearing MAGA hats facing off with Native American elder Nathan Phillips in Washington, D.C., and legions of football fans still employing the tomahawk chop in Arrowhead Stadium, a storyline that touches on the unique struggles of indigenous people feels ripped from the news, even if it's set in the 18th century. While it's all admittedly a bit heavy for a series most famous for its very realistic did they just show that? Rolls in the hay. Outlander has always been after more than just cheap thrills. Though it's a show that has always shaken off any claims of a political agenda, getting this particular storyline, set against the birth of a nation, right actually feels a lot like having a political point of view, especially at this moment in our American history. If Claire represents a more liberal way of thinking from the future, Jamie is her alpha male foil from the past. They both need each other to navigate this place where they've decided to plant their flag and call home, and their relationship flourishes when they listen to what the other has to say and compromise. From the beginning, the overarching theme of Outlander has been that Jamie is a better man for having met Claire. He is challenged and changed by this union with a whip-smart woman who always lives her truth. She forces him to question everything he once knew. He may be thought of as the king of men but she's the power behind the throne. This isn't just a behind every great man, there's an even greater woman tale, though, Claire learns just as much from Jamie as he does from her. There's a scene in the finale where the couple risks being separated yet again, and they clutch each other to say their goodbyes. You can feel the heat between them, all these years later, but there's also respect, commitment, 
and a deep love for everything they've built together with an equal partner in the new land, things we should all try to remember and emulate as we cling to those we love and try to make sense of where we are right now.